It is always good to have a couple of lawyers on speed dial. And John is with Del Rio and Caraway tackling some of these top stories this morning. Yeah, hey good to have the lawyers, especially some of the characters we have around here. Yeah. Now we got Dan Del Rio and Chuck Caraway from Del Rio and Caraway to help answer some questions for us. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. morning. Okay, so uh, there was an incident a while back at Golden One Center. A crowd gathers outside the arena waiting for a concert to start. They eventually push their way in. Uh, there's well, at some point, people thought there was gunshots. It's, it's a bad situation, stampede, if you will. I would imagine now there's a lot of legal liabilities and a lot of different parties involved. What are the questions surrounding this, and who's responsible for what? So there's a lot of angles to look at, like you mentioned. Um, you can look at it, okay, from the point of view of claims, for instance, that the employees who are working there that night have. They're claiming that there's a lack of training, uh, lack of protocols in place, um, lack of ability to do proper crowd control, that their safety may have been in danger. Uh, so they have some interesting claims, but those would be, for the most part, probably with their own employer, mm -hmm. work comp situations, stuff like that. They're looking at the issues of counseling uh, for a lot of them right now because they had heard shots or fire and were told to basically go hole up in a locked, secure room. They think they're in an active shooter situation. They did. And so there's a lot of concern as they go into the next event. We're not trained to deal with this. How do we deal with controlling a mob that's out of control. Uh, at one point you saw, I'm sure on the video, uh, that they were actually stealing products. People were in there, you know, smash and grab style, just grabbing everything they could. Uh, you know, what do they do? I mean, obviously no one's gonna tell the employee, put yourself at risk, but they don't have a, a, any sort of procedures in place for something like this. So there's obviously some uh, claims that the employees have in that situation. Um, another interesting way to look at it though is, what about for just a bystander? Someone else who's a ticket holder is in line. They said several people got trampled uh, by a situation like this. Well, crowd control is an issue that theoretically Doku and the city would be responsible for to an extent. They're the ones that have to have enough security personnel there, enough employees there, enough police you know, support there. That's their control. That's something they're responsible for. And so there is potentially there claims that could be against Doku and the city for that. Separately, you have the situation that we all know from law school of you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because you create a panic and you create harm and that will be on you. Here, fireworks were found at the scene and people believe that may have been what was considered to be the potential gunshots and that may have been what therefore sparked the panic. If that's traced back to who that is, those people have liability for going ahead and essentially originating this mm -hmm. and all the harm that comes from that. So there's a lot of different angles, and this is where it gets to be very complex in the who versus who, and what's the actual cause versus the proximate cause, and things like that. If, if the legalities of this were a 2010's Facebook status, it would say it's complicated. There you go. There's a, there's a lot of stuff what going on. What we call on. a classic law school <laughs> yeah, exam yeah, question. Yeah, the, the, you know? the dictum of it's complicated. Okay, so how about the story of Peanut the Squirrel, an internet famous squirrel? Tell us what happened and what, what's the legal issues. This, this one is complicated, actually. Yeah. It's, it really is. And so the thing that we have here is is whether or not the owner of Peanut the Squirrel has the ability to sue. And if he can sue, what it's going to be Because he was for. a guy in New York who rescued a, a wild squirrel and it became internet famous. Yes. Yes, thank you. And, and what happened was is that the local animal control came in. They came in with like at least six people, raided his house. I read reports that said without a search warrant. And they found the squirrel and they also found Fred the raccoon. They took both of them. They said during the seizure, one of them bit him. And unfortunately, they euthanized both of them because they had to check for rabies, which apparently yeah. that's the way that you do that. <laughs> Yeah, so the problem though with this case is is that the owner had Peanut the squirrel for seven years and it's illegal to have a wild animal without proper licensure. The owner says he was in the process of getting the licensure for the animal, but they seized him as a result of that. And this is kind of near and dear to my heart. I have a farm, I have a bunch of rescue animals on my farm. And so I went and I looked, I deep researched into this. And one of the things that he can sue for is, is when with the law, you have letter of the law, and you have spirit of the law. And the way you see this is if you get pulled over, if it's like, you know, they give you a ticket every single time, you speed, you get a ticket, that's a letter of the law. They're enforcing the law. Spirit of the law is when the police officer is like, yeah, you know, I know you broke the law, but really it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm going to let you go. Yeah. 
So when a government agency comes in, they have certain codes that they're allowed to enforce. And if they don't enforce those codes across the board all of the time, and you can show that they very seriously targeted you and decided to take one of these laws that they never enforce and use it to get you, then you can actually sue for that. Even though he technically did not own the squirrel because it was a wild. So that is very interesting. And so that's what he's probably going to go for. Um, so another animal, another story involving animals. I just wrote down this question. Is an elephant a person? Yes. Explain what's going on there. Yes. And this is actually really quick, and yeah. it's not that complicated. Yeah. And what you have is you have five elephants in a zoo, and you have these animal rights it's activists. in Portland, I believe, right? Portland, yeah. yeah. And they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to sue on behalf of the elephants, and they're saying because they were wild, they were captive, and they were put into the zoo, and they're having problems with this. They want to sue on behalf of the elephants, the elephant being a person, which would be what's called standing. Does the elephant have the yeah. right? The answer is right now, no. They are aware of this. It's no. So it's in the appeals court. And will it likely be granted? No, because there's widespread implications if you start allowing have animals have human rights and the ability to sue. Well, Thanksgiving's coming up on that day. I, a person, will feel like an elephant, <laughs> but that doesn't affect that case. Gentlemen, thank you so much. We appreciate it, you. guys. All right, we'll be right back. That is really